Now let's talk about COVID-19 now. There are worrying signs for Ghana as the West Africa Center for Cell Biology of Infectious Pathogens has revealed the deadly COVID-19 Delta strain has finally taken over infections in Ghana. Director for the center, Professor Gordon Awandari, in a tweet last night displayed data from WACPIP's latest study, which revealed the Delta strain constituted about 90% of community spread in the country. Well, he joins us via Zoom with more details on this new study. Um, Prof Awandari, uh, thanks for joining us. Right, now before we go to Prof, the Ghana Medical Association has also expressed similar sentiments on Ghana's handling of the virus. Now, Deputy General Secretary of the Ghana Medical Association, Dr. Titus Bayo, is also in this discussion with us. Um, so, Prof Awandari and Dr. Bayo, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Daniel. Right, I'll start with you, Dr. Uh, Bayo. What, what exactly um, is the Ghana Medical Association's worry about the handling of COVID-19 in Ghana? Um, so once again, thank you very much and a good morning to Prof. I think our main concerns stem from the fact that um, the cases are increasing uh, and we know how easily transmissible the Delta variant is. Unfortunately, we have allowed importation of this into our system and we are not seeing uh, a commensurate change in behavior or enforcement of the protocols. And knowing the kind of health system that we run, we are very concerned about it. We are seeing in our hospitals that cases are going up, critical cases are going up, uh, our vaccination space is low, and um, under such circumstances, one would think that enforcement of the protocol should be key, but we are not seeing that, and that is why the GMA has expressed concern in our latest uh, communique. Mm. So who is this concern directed at? Is it a, do you think it's a people problem or it's a leadership problem? Well, everything stopped with leadership. Uh, leadership at various levels. We think that the leadership of the country needs to play a role, but we are also calling on individuals to take personal responsibilities for their health. And now when you talk about leadership at the national level, uh, we think that continuing to urge people to uh, obey or enforce, um, obey these protocols is not working, it's simply not working. So we think there's a need for some form of enforcement of the protocols, and that's where national leadership come in. If you take something like the vaccines, we think we can know it any longer. And we, we stated that clearly in the statement. And that is not something an individual can do for themselves. We recognize the effort government is making toward these vaccines, but it's only government that can do it for us. And so we are calling on government to work on that. And then on the individual level, we are asking people to try and uh, uh, comply with the protocols. But like I said, it will require enforcement from government uh, and the, 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 the forces that be to ensure that people protect mm. themselves from harm. If we are on a path of a self-destruct, we need somebody to reverse the trend. And we think that government has a responsibility to enforce these protocols on everybody. Mm. Uh, stay with me for just a moment. Let me go over to Prof Awandari, who is on the other line. Now, you have discovered, Prof, that the Delta strain has taken over. But this was expected, wasn't it? Yes. Um, good morning. Um, and good morning to my brother, Titus. Yeah, this, this was um, just a matter of time. So we, our data is just confirming what was inevitable. Because uh, everywhere Delta has been, it has taken over. So it was just a matter of time before it dominates. And, and that has not happened. Uh, uh, mm. what, was, what was also interesting for us is that there's, a, there's another variant which was um, making a lot of uh, progress in taking over. Uh, and then Delta has come and basically suppressed that one as well. So, But we need to keep an eye on it as well. It was one of the variants that was uh, uh, driving the outbreaks in Mauritius uh, a few months ago. So um, it's called a B11318. And it's it's a variant that has been in our system for a while. We need to uh, we need to keep an eye on it as we also uh, track the Delta variant. So the the Ghana Medical Association has raised this concern 
about um, the need for us to be more careful. You just heard Dr. Bayo talk about um, how leadership needs to basically take that responsibility and ensure that the citizens are protected. Would you agree with the GMA position? Yeah, I, I think that, uh, uh, you know, that you said it all is the enforcement. Um, you know, if you look at the history of the waves we've had, the first and the second waves, Anytime we crack down on the protocols and enforce them, and people start uh, wearing their mask again at uh, a high percentage, you see that we overcome the wave, and then we come back to uh, you know, uh, you know, a certain level of uh, normalcy. So, I think that is what is required that we, you know, present a more, um, you know, uh, a more heightened state of. Uh, agency for the enforcement of the protocols and for the, the language to change from, um, you know, sort of saying that things will be okay to actually telling people that, no, if we are not careful, we can get into big trouble. Um, and, you know, if we can do that for a few weeks, I think mm. we can put, we can uh, get Delta under control as well, like we did for Alpha in January. But definitely this is the most vicious um, variant we've ever had. Uh, everywhere it has gone, it has left some damage. So I think we have to be very careful. Mm. Now, uh, if, 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 I, I stand to be corrected, Dr. Bayo, but this is the highest number of active cases that we have recorded since the, the first two cases in March 2020. 5,928 active cases currently. Dr. Bayo, your members are in the hospitals dealing with these patients. What's the story from the front line? Um, I mean, it is, it's a reflection of what we are seeing on the dashboard of the Ghana Health Service. Uh, we are encountering it in various forms. Um, it's become so common, let me put it that way. And, and, and that's just what the story is. And, and that's why we said that our healthcare systems continue to be very fragile and we need to up our game. Because if you, if you check from the, the healthcare point of view, health worker point of view, uh, if you go to the northern and upper part of our country, most of our healthcare workers have received a single vaccine only. So they've not had the opportunity to get a second shot of the vaccine. If you come to the greater Accra, um, Ashanti, most people got the two shots and therefore seemingly are protected. But this Delta variant is a very, very, very stubborn one. Uh, even people who are vaccinated get the infection. And so people have genuine concerns about the rising numbers. And for us, our biggest concern is that when the numbers begin to rise and we sound the alarm bells, people get the assurance that, oh, just take it easy. These numbers are not much. We are not seeing a lot of sick people or people dying. But it's just a matter of time. We know that our capacity is better than it was in March last year. It's better than it was in March this year. But the truth is that it is just a matter of time. Mm. With these numbers going up, and if more people get critically ill and will require in-hospital care, we cannot cope. And then we'll come to the point where our phones are going to be inundated with calls or people trying to get ICU beds for relations, uh, trying to get oxygen for relations. And, and stuff like that. So I think it is earlier, the, the earlier we take a decision, the better it will be for all of us. And we think that only two things matter here. One is the enforcement of the protocols. And we have to go beyond appealing, but to actually enforce them. And that's why we use the word enforcement. If you keep appealing and the people are not adhering to it and you know what the future looks like, you have to intervene. The next is the vaccination. We need large doses of the vaccination of, or the vaccines to ramp up the vaccination process. Until a large proportion of the population is vaccinated, we cannot overcome this. Mm. So I think these two arms are critical to our mm. fight. And then the final one is that we urge individuals. We can only appeal, but government can enforce. And from our point of view, just to protect our healthcare system, use your max to protect your neighbor, your friend, use your max. To protect yourself, use the max. And if that event you are going to is not important, please do not go. Mass gatherings must be avoided as much as is possible. 
And I think if we do this, we'll be able to get out of the woods. Thank you so much, Dr. Titus Bayo. I'll finally take a comment from Prof. Arandari on this, quickly on this B11318 variant. Um, what do we know about this one? Well, um, like I mentioned, it, it drove a wave in Mauritius uh, a few months back, and I think that's how it became, uh, it, it came to the world's attention. It, it's still not been declared as a variant of concern, but uh, for us in Ghana, we need to be tracking it because it was thriving very well until Delta came. So we have to watch and see um, when Delta subsides, whether it will take off again. But it's, uh, it's one of those that we are tracking. And, uh, 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 you know, it could, okay. it could become a problem in the future, but we'll, we'll keep track of it. Right. Thank you very much, Professor Gordon Awandari, for joining us. He's the head of WACPIP. Earlier, we had Dr. Titus Bayo of the Ghana Medical Association.